Hello students, now let's discuss about a very important topic which is testicular feminization syndrome. In testicular feminization syndrome, let's go step by step. So what is a karyotype? Karyotype is 46 XY. So definitely this testicular feminization syndrome is happening in which sex? It is definitely male okay so genetically as there is presence of y chromosome it is 100 percent say male embryo now guys please concentrate as there is y chromosome definitely this embryo is going to express sry gene which is present on the y chromosome so sry gene is expressed so, because of the expression of this SRY gene, there is formation of which gonads? It's the testis. So, in a male fetus, sorry, in the male embryo, there is development of a testis. Okay, well and good. Now, testis, this male testis, okay, anyhow, this testis are present definitely in male. We shouldn't be saying it as male testis or female testis. No, testis is there in this male embryo. Now, this testis. We have two important cells. What are they? Serratoli cells. These serratoli cells, we know that these serratoli cells are making an important hormone which is known as Mullerian inhibiting hormone. Okay, Mullerian inhibiting hormone or Mullerian inhibiting factor. So, what this Mullerian inhibiting factor is doing? This Mullerian inhibiting factor or Mullerian inhibiting hormone, it will act on the Mullerian ducts. It will act on the Mullerian duct and causes regression. Okay. So, it causes regression of Mullerian ducts. So, which is usually normal. Why? Why? Because in a male, there shouldn't be development of Mullerian ducts. So, as there is a regression of Mullerian ducts, what happens? This male embryo is no longer going to develop uterus, cervix, upper two-third of vagina and fallopian tubes. Okay. So, these structures are absent. Is it normal or abnormal? This is absolutely normal. Why? Because this is a male embryo. So, in this male, uterus, cervix, fallopian tubes and upper two-third of the vagina, these are no longer needed. Okay, these are not needed. So, till here, it's absolutely normal. Now, let's continue. In the testis, there are one more group of cells which are known as Leydig cells. Now, these Leydig cells, we know that these Leydig cells produce which hormone? Very, very important hormone that is testosterone. Okay, testosterone, which is a androgen. Okay, so testosterone is produced from the Leydig cells. Even in this patient who is having testicular feminization syndrome androgen is getting produced from the leading cell there is no doubt till here now usually this androgen will act on the embryological structure certain embryological structures so that there is the development of the male external genitalia so please guys concentrate on my words for the development of male external genitalia Testosterone should be acted on certain embryological structures. For example, the action of these androgens on genital swellings will produce the scrotum. Genital folds will be converted into urethra. Genital tubercle will be converted into glans penis. Okay. Now, please, okay, let me write it for you so that it will be clear. Usually, these androgens, testosterone, it will be mainly converted into 
this testosterone will convert into more potent form of testosterone which is dihydrotestosterone and this dihydrotestosterone will act on genital swellings, genital folds, genital tubercle. So that genital swellings will be converted into scrotum in males, genital folds will be converted into urethra, okay. Genital tubercle will be converted into glands, penis, okay. So this is absolutely normal, okay. Testosterone will be converted into dihydrotestosterone. This dihydrotestosterone will be helping in the formation of external male genitalia that is scrotum, glans, penis, urethra which is absolutely normal. But in testicular feminization syndrome where exactly problem lies? There is production of androgens that is there is production of testosterone. These androgens are insensitive. I can say it like this. The androgens are resistant. What does it actually mean? Now, these tissues or these structures, they are resistant to the androgens. These androgens, they are no longer can act on these embryological structures. Androgens are there. But these androgens cannot act on these structures. So, what happens? These structures, these embryological structures, whenever there is no action of androgens, they will be automatically converted into female external genitalia. That's what exactly happening in the testicular feminization syndrome. So here in testicular feminization syndrome, the, as the androgens are unable to act on these embryological structures due to androgen resistance, these embryological structures they will be converted into now see they will be converted into whenever there is no action of these androgens genital swellings they will be converted into labia majora genital folds they will be converted into labia minora genital tubercle will be converted into clitoris so this is a male with the development of female okay please concentrate the development of female external genitalia okay this is what exactly happening due to androgen resistance okay due to androgen resistance there is development of female external genitalia in a male so by the time of birth, this male baby will have what kind of external genitalia? Female looking genitalia. So, this male will be raised as a female. Okay guys, please keep in mind, male will be raised as a female. Okay. So, even this baby don't know that she, he is a male. Okay. So, it's a he which is looking like a she but it's not she, it's a he. Okay. Please, it's a very, very confusing. Please concentrate. Now, does this baby have any internal female reproductive organs? No. Internal female reproductive organs are not there. Why? Because testis produces Mullerian inhibiting factor so that Mullerian inhibiting factor will inhibit the development of Mullerian duct so that there is no uterus, cervix, fallopian tubes and upper two third of vagina. Okay, they are not there. Now, important point is in this embryo or in this person as there is androgen resistance now these androgens they cannot act on their receptors so central nervous system is not getting negative feedback from these androgens so central nervous system or the anti-opituitary is keep on producing the gonadotropin hormones like lh 
So what happens in this condition? Here as this person is unable to or I should be saying like this as this person's androgens they are unable to give the negative feedback the person's anterior pituitary is making too much amount of gonadotropins that is luteinizing hormone. So the, as there is increase amount of luteinizing hormone that will further increase the production of androgens. So there is too much amount of androgens in this person. Now what happens? These androgens they are not functional right? because there is resistance. So these androgens they will be peripherally aromatized. Okay, they will be peripherally aromatized to estrogens. Okay, so in this patient, the androgens they are getting converted into estrogens in the peripheral tissues. Okay, in the peripheral tissues. Okay, that is the peripheral tissue in the sense here it's the adipose tissue. Okay. In the adipose tissue, the androgens they are getting converted into estrogens. So, why this is important? This male who is raised as a female, now this female, okay, female look like is going to reach the age of puberty at puberty. At puberty, what happens? So, if this female is having lots of estrogens. Okay, this female is having lots of estrogens. Now, these estrogens will help in the development of a breast. Now, these estrogens will cause the breast development. Okay, now this male who is looking like a female, will this male develop breast? Yes, absolutely breast development is present. Even you know the breasts are bigger than the normal tanner size, tanner size four breasts will be seen. Why? Because all the androgens they are getting peripherally okay, they are getting peripherally aromatized to estrogens. So, these too much of estrogens will cause the breast development. Tanner size four breasts will be there, okay. Just for the age of 14 15, having tanner size four breasts is inappropriate, okay. So, we will say larger breasts will be seen. Now, guys, there is breast development because of estrogens. Are these estrogens coming from ovaries? Usually in a female, the estrogens are coming from the ovaries. Here ovaries are present? No. Then how can she is having these estrogens? The estrogens are coming from the peripheral aromatization due to or peripheral ar aromatization from androgens. Okay, please keep that point in mind. Now, let's go further. Now, what about the androgens in this? patient. Now androgens are present no doubt but there is resistance. We know it. So what? Now as there is resistance usually androgens are necessary for the development of androgens are necessary for the development of axillary hair and pubic hair. Here in this conditions androgens are present no doubt but as there is resistance pubic hair development pubic hair development and axillary hair development are not seen okay pubic hair development and axillary hair development are absent okay so these secondary sexual characters are absent but there is breast development this breast development is not because of the presence of ovaries here there are no ovaries okay please keep that point in mind now let's see so this male who is raised as a female when this uh, female looking like okay if a female look like when she reaches a puberty there is breast development there is no doubt but will this female will she menstruate will she have her normal periods no 
she is absolutely looking normal okay she is i have to say she will be more attractive why she is more attractive why because she is having too much amount of estrogens these estrogens will give her more feminine look okay okay she will be having a very soft skin soft you know very soft skin with uh, long hair she will be absolutely looking normal even more attractive but will she have her periods no why she is not having her periods why because no periods why why because there is no uterus okay there is no uterus there are no ovaries there are no uterus and no ovaries how can she menstruate okay so there are no periods because there is no uterus and no ovaries okay please don't forget now this female who is actually male is going to present to our clinic by the time of puberty with the chief complaint of so the complaints will be something like this doctor i'm almost 15 years of age i'm almost 16 years of age i'm having normal breast development but still now i haven't had my period started so the chief complaint is primary amenorrhea rhea okay the primary amenorrhea now as a doctor what i will be doing i will be doing the physical examination on physical examination the breast is absolutely normal okay she is more feminine okay, okay female looking absolutely normal but one thing the one striking feature a very very important keyword to diagnosis the key feature here is no axillary or pubic hair okay the secondary sexual characters these secondary sexual characters like axillary hair and pubic hair they are not developed okay she is totally hairless her body no secondary sexual hair is there now now i will be asking the female to go for the ultra ultrasonography okay i just ask her to go for the ultrasonography in the ultrasonography it the report is very clear that uterus is absent of fallopian tubes are absent cervix is absent and upper two third of vagina is also absent all these structures are absent now guys remember even there is one more condition where there is absence of uterus fallopian tubes cervix and upper two third of vagina what is that condition that is mullerian agenesis even a female with mullerian agenesis will not have these structures but mullerian agenesis that's a characteristically 46xx that's a perfect female this is a female look alike okay now i just want to differentiate a diagnosis whether this female is actually a male or this female is having mullerian agenesis why because same even mullerian agenesis these structures will be absent so now i will be asking this female to go for the karyotyping karyo typing okay now i just got some doubt that this female is not having any of the secondary sexual characters especially the pubic hair and axillary hair they are not developed but breast development is there with the features of a primary amenorrhea now i just got doubt and ask the ask her to go for the karyotyping in the karyotyping now it is clear so what will be the karyotyping just just tell it is 46 x y okay 46 x y yes now i am very much sure this is not a female this is a male genetically this is a male why because there is y chromosome okay now even in ultrasonography you can find there is intra abdominal testis okay there is intra abdominal testis why because there is y chromosome and this y chromosome have the srvy gene and this srvy gene is expressing so that there is the development of testis but this testis is not getting descended down why because there is no scrotum development here so this testis is now present in the abdomen as intra abdominal testis 
Now, why this is important? This point have some uh, very importance. As there is this intra-abdominal testis, and this testis is making the androgens, okay? Now, as there is this intra-abdominal testis, this intra-abdominal testis is having a high risk of high risk of malignant transformation okay so this intra abdominal test is in a patient who is having testicular feminization syndrome is at a high risk of malignant transformation now what we can do so how we can treat so we can do we can remove this testis okay so surgically you have to remove this testis remove testis but important mcq is when when you have to remove this testis the testis should be removed only after only after puberty only after the completion of puberty we have to remove the testis. Why? Why? Because this testis is the one who actually produce androgens. These androgens are getting converted into estrogens. So this estrogens in this person is going to help in the development of breast. So we have to preserve this function. So only this testis will be removed after puberty. Okay? Please keep that point in mind. Now, what else we can do? Guys, remember, here, in this person, the testis is present intra-abdominally during, during embryological development, the testis is there. Now, this testis is going to produce the Mullerian inhibiting factor. This Mullerian inhibiting factor inhibits the development of Mullerian ducts. Now, it was very clear, okay, just once concentrate, Mullerian ducts will produce the upper two-third part of the vagina. As in this person, please concentrate here, in this person, as there is Mullerian inhibiting factor which is producing from the testis, there is no development of the upper two-third of vagina. So whatever the vagina which is seen in this patient is a blind pouch. Okay, the lower one-third of vagina which is formed from the urogenital sinus is a blind pouch. So, this female, when, when this female marries, what happens? There will be interruption in the coital function, okay? There will be hindrance. Guys, please concentrate. Now, in this female, vagina is a blind pouch, okay? The vagina is a blind pouch because the upper two-third of vagina is not formed. So, whenever this female, who is actually a male, okay, whenever this female marries, what happens? There is a problem with the intercourse. So, for this, what we can do? We can do vaginoplasty, okay? Guys, we are going to let these females as a females, okay? We are not going to do anything here. We are going to do the vaginoplasty so that she can have a normal coital activity. Okay. Now, vaginoplasty is done. Okay. Just before marriage. Now, will she become pregnant? Okay. Will she become pregnant? No. Absolutely not. Pregnancy not possible. Pregnancy not possible. Why the pregnancy is not possible? Why? Because first of all, uterus is not there. Ovaries are not there. Before this, first of all, this is a male. Okay, this is a male with Y chromosome. Testes are there. So, pregnancy is not possible in this patients. Okay, there is no chance of this patient getting pregnant. So, just leave these females as a females by doing the vaginoplasty okay guys the topic is completed okay everything we have bring together but please remember the differential diagnosis for testicular feminization syndrome one more point i just want to add it here the testicular feminization syndrome 
okay please concentrate this testicular feminization syndrome there is one more name this testicular feminization syndrome is also known as androgen insensitivity syndrome okay why it is known as androgen insensitivity syndrome why because these androgens are not sensitive okay these androgens they are having the resistance so we will call the testicular feminization syndrome also as ais androgen insensitivity syndrome and the differential diagnosis should be done with the mullerian agenesis why because in mullerian agenesis also there is no uterus no cervix no upper two third of the vagina and the patient is going to present to the clinic with a chief complaint of primary amenorrhea but there it is a karyotypically it is a female mullerian agenesis but here same features no uterus no cervix no fallopian tubes no upper two third of the vagina same complaints primary amenorrhea but here it is karyotypically a male which is raised as a, a female with the proper breast development due to the conversion of androgens to estrogens okay guys the topic is completed